Hello, uh, we just finished a session at the OECD Competition Committee on the subject of uh, consumer-facing remedies, and we're very lucky here to have with us Amelia Fletcher, who is a non-executive director at the UK Competition and Markets Authority and a professor of competition law. So, Amelia, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, so I wanted to ask you, we heard a lot today that a lot of competition authorities don't really use these kinds of remedies. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you say to an authority that was maybe thinking about getting into this, this uh, business? Well, I'd uh, say that they can be very powerful. Um, and in fact, so I've done a whole study looking at a whole set of these remedies. Um, and the idea was to actually try and learn about how effective they had been historically and what the evidence was on that. There's quite a lot of evidence of them not being effective, but there is quite a lot of evidence of them being effective as well. So what I did with my study was try to bring out some of the lessons that could be learned in terms of making them more effective. One of the key lessons is actually about making sure that you really understood what it is that is stopping consumers making uh, kind of the decisions that really would drive competition more effectively. Mm -hmm. um, don't just throw lots of information at consumers, for example. That might just bury them. They get information overload and make even worse decisions. Right. Think about how you're going to present that information to consumers uh, in a way that's really going to facilitate uh, uh, their decision making and therefore competition. Really think about the choice architecture that they uh, that they're facing, really think about the tools that could make their shopping around across pr uh, pr uh, products m easier uh, for them. If you do that sort of thing and you really think about the real consumers and then test out how your remedies uh, seem to be working on real consumers, that's that's, well, maybe that's the gold standard. Um, maybe you don't go there straight away, but that, that's the direction you should be heading. Oh, that's very informative. So another, you know, another thing that we heard during the discussion, a couple of consumer groups expressed a concern that maybe talking about these demand side competition problems makes us think that we're starting to blame consumers for competition not working in the market or yeah. a demand side remedy puts the owners on consumers to really mm -hmm. make competition work properly. What would you say to someone that had that kind of concern? I think, I think authorities have to be really careful with their tone. Um, you know, consumers have got better things to do of an evening, I'm very well aware, than think about the perfect energy supplier for, for their needs. Um, so actually what behavioural, um, what these sorts of remedies are about is about trying to make life easier for consumers so that if they are inclined to make these decisions that it's easier for them to do so and maybe to trigger them to make these decisions or sometimes to change defaults so that they default into a potentially better decision rather than a, a, a a, a, a decision that essentially exploits their their their, their behaviour, um, and um, but all in all cases, the, but the the remedies are not usually on the consumer directly. They don't mm. usually say consumer, you must choose better. Right. The remedies are in fact on the supplier mm. um, to basically put in place um, a, a, an architecture that will help consumers uh, make better choices. Great. Well, that's very encouraging. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time and, and thank you very much for joining us.